Are you ready to change your life, but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising flood waters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. PureSoapFlakes.com, 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with Pure Soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I have dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, 7 days a week, just log into kmdlaw.com, that's kmdlaw.com, or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW, that's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents, they handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be, because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4KMDLaw. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. It's the Opperman Report. Join digital forensic investigator and PI Ed Opperman for an in-depth discussion of conspiracy theories, strategy of New World Order resistance, high-profile court cases in the news, and interviews with expert guests and authors on these topics and more. It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. Uh, You can find me at Opperman Investigations and Digital Forensic Consulting, uh, either through my website, emailrevealer.com, or you can email me directly at oppermaninvestigations at gmail.com. If you like our show, be sure and check out our Patreon. It's a brand new Patreon. We have about only about 50 shows up there yet, Uh, but we're putting up eight hours of new content every every, uh, month. Uh, That's uh, the Opperman Report Patreon. And, of course, our archives are always free. You can find all of our old shows at Spreaker.com. There's a chat room and a 
Uh, you get an email notification anytime we put up new content, and it's totally free. You can sign up for free and follow us for free. And it might be a good time to do that now because we're getting hit with all kinds of stuff on YouTube uh, where they're, they're they're sending me strikes, and the YouTube channel is about to go. Uh, they're deleting a bunch of shows on there. Uh, all the old shows with uh, Cisco Street Love are gone. Uh, so if you've been listening on YouTube, it's a good time to make the switch now over to Spreaker. Our guest today is Ike McCorkle. And he's running for Congress over in CD4 in Colorado. A uh, fascinating man. He's been a, a, a military hero, uh, special operations type guy. Uh, Ike McCorkle, are you there? Hi, uh, yes, sir. Uh, thanks so much for having me, Ed. No, thank you so much for coming on the show. Tell us about yourself, though. Ike McCorkle. Who is Ike McCorkle? Yeah, yeah. It's a really pl- uh, pleasure to be here. And, um, and I really appreciate the opportunity to talk with you guys this morning. Um, yeah, uh, Ike McCorkle uh, is me, <laughs> and um, you know I'm a retired uh, uh, Marine officer. Uh, like you said, I did um, 12 years as an enlisted Marine, and uh, you know was in the infantry and uh, force recon. And um, then I, <clears throat> after 12 years of service, I was a, a gunnery sergeant, and um, that's a E7 in the Marines, and uh, and I got uh, accepted for the enlisted. A commissioning education program and uh you know got commissioned the second lieutenant and uh served six years in the corps as an officer and um you know that really um formed my uh perspectives um on you know our constitution uh on our nation and um really military service um in general uh is what formed uh my perspectives uh, even you know, early in my life, um, and I'll just uh, get into a little bit of my background um, <laughs> since you asked, you know, who is Ike? Um, well, I was raised by a tough single mom in rural Washington State and uh, rural Texas and Alabama, and, um, <clears throat> you know, we were on welfare and food stamps and free meals at school, and um, those programs are what uh, gave my mom the ability uh, to um, lift herself up by her bootstraps. Um, I didn't mention, but uh, when I was two years old, uh, my dad uh, took off, and my mom was left at 27 uh, with three kids, um, my older brother, Justin, um, and my little sister, Alana, <coughs> and a, a bankrupt convenience store. Uh, and so uh, she had nothing to stand on, and um, I had to go back to school um completed her nursing degree and it was because of programs like welfare and food stamps and free meals at school that my mom was able to do that and um gain her commission in the united states air force and i apologize about my voice you'll hear me constantly clearing my throat uh it's because i have a paralyzed vocal cord uh from a combat (coughs) injury that i got uh downrange in iraq but yeah my mom I uh, joined uh, the United States Air Force uh, when I was uh, the summer I turned eight, and we uh, moved uh, from uh, Washington State to uh, Texas, and you know, um, it added, that improved our lives very much. And um, like I said, <clears throat> it formed my perspectives, and the example that I had uh, in my mother, um, in the, is why uh, I am the civically oriented uh, kind of engaged uh, citizen uh, that I am today. Uh, I'm also, of course, a very concerned father. But, um, you know, like I said, I grew up in rural Washington, uh, Texas, and Alabama, and (coughs) wound up joining the Marines uh, at the age of 17. Um, I quit high school when I was 16 because I was bored, and I got my GED, and um, I did a year at a community college in uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and uh, joined the Marines when I was 17 years old. And, um, you know, the things that I learned in service, um, the education that I received um, is what is why I am who I am today. And, um, you know, that's the type of things that I think that we need to start uh, thinking about, uh, putting in place uh, for all the citizens of our country, uh, not just service members, um, access to health care, 
um, access to education. Um, and so <clears throat> military service and, you know, taking care of um, my subordinates, my peers, um, learning from my superiors uh, over almost 18 years of service, um, over uh, six deployments, uh, four combat tours, um, developed a, a perspective uh, of service and, and sacrifice. Um, uh, <clears throat> service before self is what we say in the Marines. And um, Ductus Exemplo is the Marine Officer Corps' uh, motto, which is leadership by example. And that's exactly what I think that we need um, in office in, in the U.S. House of Representatives is leadership by example. And one of the key factors, um, and I learned that lesson in leadership by example even before I joined the Marines from my mom, but what we need is uh, legislators in office that are going to accept, that are going to set the example. And what I mean by that is set the example by refusing to accept um, <clears throat> bribes. Uh, <laughs> that would be nice, yeah. Hey, my, uh, my, uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, after you left the Marine Corps, uh, did you go straight into public service or, or did you go into business? What did you do after that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Got it. Well, at the time, because I retired in late 2014, um, I, uh, my plan was to garden and you know, <laughs> spend time with my kids and um, be engaged in their life, <clears throat> kind of the way my dad wasn't in ours and uh set the example but um uh, that uh you know plan didn't work out uh, as they often don't um you know we say in the marines that you know no plan survives first contact and and that was surely the case here um but after retiring in 2014 my plan was to you know spend time with my kids and garden and uh do yoga and uh, relax after 18, you know, tough years and six deployments and four combat tours. You know, I was going to relax <laughs> and have a little me time. Mm -hmm. But um, I recognized um, in the 16 election cycle uh, that the, in, <clears throat> excuse me, that the integrity of the uh, institutions that I swore to support and defend um, were being compromised. And, uh, that being the case, um, my children's um, viable future was being compromised. And the financial corruption of our government <laughs> has been, you know, decades in the making. But it is why we are not, you know, addressing the climate crisis, for instance. Um, and <clears throat> that corruptive influence in our government um, is what I see as the primary uh, thing that needs to be addressed so that we can make progress in other um, sectors. Uh, for instance, if we want um, investment in adequate health care that isn't profit driven or um, education that is student oriented instead of profit driven, mm -hmm. um, we need legislators in office <coughs> that don't accept um, contributions from corporate political action committees um, that are that corruptive influence that I keep mentioning. And it's what Eisenhower warned us about um, when he left office. And I'm sorry, go down a little bit of a rabbit's hole every time I start to talk about government, but it really is decades in the making. And, uh, you know, Eisenhower warned us about the dangerous potentials of the congressional military industrial complex to corrupt the motivation of the legislature and he was talking about its potential to engage us in, in protracted fiscally driven foreign wars which we've been engaged in for decades and its potential to corrupt the legislature and um, that's the crux of the matter uh, that I think a lot of people um, kind of overlook when they're examining Eisenhower's um, <clears throat> dictation is that he wasn't just talking about us being engaged in protracted wars. He was talking about the actual dollar cost of um, the military industrial complex and that its impact on uh, our nation's investment in 
uh, our educational institutions, in our healthcare systems, uh, in our infrastructure, and we see that right now the, that the one percent is profiting uh, to a astronomical degree, while our infrastructure crumbles, while our healthcare uh, system fails the needs of our citizens, while our educational institutions um, don't even have enough funds to pay their teachers livable wages or condition the air in their buildings. Um, and yeah, so corruption, from my perspective, is what we need to remove from government if we want to start having a government that will uh, serve the will, needs, and interests of our citizens. Um, that especially being true in rural districts like Congressional District 4. Yeah, well, yeah, why don't you describe, what is CD4 like? I mean, what is the, the demographics? Uh, is it a rural area? <laughs> it really is. Um, it kind of has three uh, major population centers. About 72%, and I'm going off um, memory here, so um, these are estimations, but very close. Roughly 72% of the population uh, lives in the big three, which is uh, Douglas County, uh, Boulder County, and Weld County. And uh, the towns, the big towns in, in those areas are Longmont and Parker Castle Rock and uh, Greeley, and uh, that, that's about 72% of our population. The other 28-odd uh, percent, roughly, uh, lives in the rural counties, and um, that's <clears throat> roughly a third of the state, the eastern uh, 22 counties, and <clears throat> it's, um, you know, comprised of a large uh, agricultural um, areas that uh, rely on corn and wheat hmm. and rely on hemp, and um, they are suffering. Uh, they're suffering um, not just the effects of the tariffs and the trade wars and the uh, economic devastation of COVID-19, uh, but they're suffering the effects of climate change. Um, and there are dryland farmers in our district that haven't had a crop in two years. And so we have uh, a situation where we have a legislator in office who's voted against the farm bill. And um, at the same time, um, you know, farm subsidies uh, under this administration have just skyrocketed. And they've skyrocketed specifically because of the conditions that, that have been set uh, by this administration in, in the destruction of uh, markets uh, for crops and we've seen uh, farm subsidies, <clears throat> and this is the message that we really need to be speaking uh, to farmers and ranchers about, is that um, this administration has made them reliant on these federal subsidies. Uh, it's destroyed their markets. Uh, it's made the farming uh, overall go from about $13 uh, billion in annual subsidies um, the tariffs and the trade wars uh, made <clears throat> those subsidies uh, climb all the way up to around uh, almost $24 billion in subsidies. And then the effects of COVID-19 have taken those subsidies all the way up to um, almost $33 billion. Um, what that means is that our farming and ranching community uh, doesn't have the ability uh, to support itself. And subsidies in that level are not sustainable. Uh, so what we need to do uh, in order to take care of uh, the agricultural community, um, which is a huge part of uh, CD4, is um, set in place uh, the legislative conditions uh, that will um, reestablish uh, markets uh, for our agricultural products. Um, that means fair trade deals. And, you know, we don't have a representative in office right now um, who's supporting any, any of that. Um, <clears throat> well, well I, I, let me ask you this. Now, is um, CD4, is this a wealthy uh, district? Because Boulder is a pretty wealthy area, right? Is this a wealthy area? And what about unemployment? Is there high unemployment? Yeah, so it, it varies 
uh, pretty drastically. Um, of course, we've seen unemployment across the board uh, climb pretty drastically <clears throat> because of uh, COVID-19. Um, but uh, we, and I was just about to talk about uh, the needs of people who have lost their jobs mm. uh, in employment uh, due to COVID-19. Um, but CD4 <clears throat> is um, uh, largely um, a rural district, and um, the the folks out there, you know, um, work on farms, they work on ranches, and uh, they work in meatpacking plants uh, up in Weld and Greeley, um, and they work in the oil and gas industry. And so they also work in the renewable energy industry. Uh, but um, the uh, prior few things that I mentioned, the oil and gas industry, the meatpacking plants, the corn farms, the wheat farms, the hemp farms, uh, they're, they're all uh, suffering uh, the effects uh, of the tariffs and the trade wars and the destruction of their markets. Um, so <clears throat> even before uh, the economic effects of COVID-19, there were large swaths of our district uh, who were um, experiencing economic hardship. Um, now, that's kind of true across the board in the country as well, where 80% of our society uh, almost uh, is living, you know, even before COVID-19, paycheck to paycheck, and now has, you know, very little ability to pay their rent or mortgage or put food on the table. Well, then, I, what we need to let, let me ask you a tough question, Ike, okay, because you mentioned before the military-industrial complex, right? And here you are, you talk right. about, you represent this area where there's a lot of unemployment. Well, let's say I'm Lockheed Martin, right? And I come to Ike McCorkle, and I say, listen, Ike, you know, Ike gets elected, right? I say, listen, Ike, yeah. we're going to put a little factory down here for you, okay? We're going to get you some employment, okay? Right. But, but we want you to keep your mouth shut, <laughs> okay? Now, that's a, that's a dilemma. <laughs> that's a dilemma, Ike. What do, what do you do then? <laughs> well, sir, that, is, that would be a quid pro quo, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I would tell Lockheed Martin to go shove it where the sun don't shine. And the same that I would tell uh, the Speaker of the House, the same that I would tell the President of the United States if they were telling me um, <clears throat> to speak or, or to um, uh, toe the line. Um, now, my opponent does toe the line, um, but I won't toe the line uh, for any multinational corporation, for any PAC. Um, for any corporate conglomerate, for the military industrial complex, because, uh, you know, fundamentally, that's not who I w will be working for. And I think that's a concept um, that folks um, in, in service and government uh, kind of fail to uh, grasp as well, especially my opponent, Ken Buck, fails to grasp that he does not work for uh, the executive branch. He does not work for the president of the United States. He works for the citizens of Congressional District 4. And um, instead of serving the needs of, of the citizens of CD4, um, but toes the line uh, for the executive branch. And uh, that is a breakdown in representative government. Um, and that's one of the reasons, you know, that I'm running for office, because um, I believe in you know democracy um i believe in our republic uh i believe in our constitutional uh rights and you know i believe that we need a government that is uh, true to form in that it represents the will interest and needs of the constituents of the nation and the security of the nation um before that of uh, any corporation and uh, Ken Buck, isn't he the one? I think I saw a documentary recently with uh, that guy Matt Gates. Um, and didn't Ken yeah. Buck say something about he didn't want to run again? What changed his mind? Yeah, yeah. Um, he was tired. Know, he was bored or something. What was that? He didn't want to run, right? <laughs> he said a couple different things like yeah. that. He said, you know, he said he has no um, illusion that anything he says makes any difference. Okay. He said. Uh, he doesn't want he doesn't want to be a you know congressman anymore. Uh, he's ready for retirement, and you know I think that uh, he's right. Um, 
you can see that in uh, his votes and, and in the way that uh, he engages in his district. Um, the reason <clears throat> Kim Buck is running for office again, in my opinion, is not that he really wants to serve the constituents of District 4. Uh, the reason Ken is running for office is because the corrupt corporate political establishment <clears throat> in Washington uh, wanted him to run. It's because he has name recognition, and they're terrified that they're going to lose another seat, that they're going to lose control of <clears throat> the U.S. Uh, Senate, the U.S. House, and that they won't be able <clears throat> to keep their corrupt agenda in place, which supports uh, the profits of their shareholders, and hence the accounts that fill their campaign coffers. Um, and, and that's the, the crux of the problem. And when we get <clears throat> to campaign finance reform, you know, we'll, we'll have uh, legislators more interested uh, in serving the people than in lining the pockets of shareholders uh, that contribute, you know, indirectly uh, to their campaigns via these um, corporate political action committees. I was looking up Ken Buck as you were talking. Now, is it true that uh, just recently there was that shooting up in Michigan, uh, and that the next day or shortly after that he showed up at a at some type of a rally with a uh, kill 'em all and let like, God sort him out T-shirt? Yeah, un unfortunately, that's the case. Um, and you know, that's not the only incident um, of uh, kind of the propagation of. Um, of um, a toxic um, culture. And uh, it, in my opinion, as a representative, uh, as a leader, uh, you need to set the example. And um, leadership, especially in a representative institution of government, is responsible for conducting the deliberative process, for solving problems, you know, via verbal engagement. Um, and the example that Ken Buck sets is, um, you know, taking an AR-15 off his wall and pointing it at the camera and uh, telling, you know, Vice President Biden and uh, Congressman Vito O'Rourke to come and try and take it from him, uh, threatening them um, in, a, in a way uh, very directly and, you know, displaying uh, completely inappropriate conduct with respect to uh, the proper handling of uh, firearms and munitions. And, you know, <clears throat> that was a few months back in the summer, I think June, I think. And uh, then the incident that you mentioned um, <clears throat> it happened just days, you know, after Americans, uh, innocent Americans, uh, were gunned down uh, on our streets. Um, and just days, you know, after uh, that happened, um, after innocent Americans were gunned down on our streets, Ken Buck showed up at a, uh, you know, pro-gun rally, hmm. um, campaign rally, and, um, you know, wore a T-shirt that said, like you mentioned, kill them all and let God sort it out. Well, <clears throat> not only is that, you know, inappropriate in uh, the current you know, national atmosphere um, or, uh, with respect uh, to firearms and ammunition, um, but it's completely contradictory um, to good order and discipline and leadership and everything uh, that any military service member uh, ever learned. Uh, you know, and I read a lot of the Denver Post and I enjoy their articles. They're a great uh, news organization. Uh, but in the uh, description uh, in the Denver Post, they did say that this was a pro-military T-shirt. Hmm. Well, uh, killing them all and, and letting God sort it out, um, that is unequivocally not at all in keeping with any type of a, you know, proper military conduct in any unit uh, that I've ever been in. Right, well, that would be a and war crime. Wouldn't that be a war crime? Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and leadership is responsible, um, you know, for uh, the effects of uh, their verbal communications, for the effects of 
uh, their media, and the effect of wearing that T-shirt is further dividing Americans. It's making conflict more likely, not less likely. And it's the exact opposite of what somebody in a position of leadership should be doing, which is counseling calm, which is uh, counseling the deliberative process and solving problems in that fashion, in a peaceful fashion. Yeah, grandstanding and, and showboating and waving a farm around is childish in any in anybody's uh, uh, estimation. That's just ridiculous. Let's take a little commercial break here. We were with Ike McCorkle, who's running for Congress, uh, House of Representatives in CD4 in Colorado. Uh, you can find his website at ike4co.com. That's Ike, I-K-E, the number 4, co.com. And if you want to donate to Mike, if you like what you heard so far, you can go to give ike4co.com that's through act blue uh, we'll be right back with more of ike mccorkle who's running for a uh, former uh, a marine uh, vet uh, running for uh, congress in cd4 in colorado we'll be right back after these messages and now a word from our sponsors have you ever thought about opening your own mobile card or kiosk business maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee food or retail services Card King International can be the answer to your needs. Card King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Card King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at 1-877-986-7771 and get your sales rolling. Thank you so much for listening to the Opperman Report. I want to welcome all our new listeners at WWPR at 1490 AM in the Tampa Bay area. We're brand new down here. We're getting a nice warm welcome. We have great advertising opportunities for local sponsors, local businesses, but also international websites and international companies too. We're on our other stations in California, Nevada, Utah, and on the internet worldwide. But down here in Tampa Bay, Florida, we have some great opportunities for you to come in and get very, very affordable advertising rates. Get a hold of me at Opperman Report at G gmail.com and we'll cut you a good deal puresoapflakes.com 218-568-2525 have you ever heard of castile soap pure soap flake company handcrafts fine soap bars laundry powder and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern minnesota facility bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance gmos palm oil sodium laurel sulfate and synthetic additives keep it clean folks Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long today. Great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flight Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at Aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. 
It's the Opperman Report. And now, here is investigator Ed Opperman. Okay, welcome back to the Opperman Report. I'm your host, private investigator Ed Opperman. We're here today with Ike McCorkle, uh, who's a former uh, decorated Marine, combat Marine, who's running for uh, Congress in CD4 in Colorado. Uh, his website, you can check out all his policies and um, stances and stuff like that on his website, Ike4CO.com. That's Ike, I-K-E, the number 4, C-O.com. So, Ike, uh, let's see. Well, first of all, how is Colorado uh, in the polls right now? Where are they swinging, toward Trump or toward Biden? Well, uh, Colorado uh, overall is, um, you know, <clears throat> swinging heavily uh, towards Biden. Okay. And uh, that's a good thing. You know, um, we're uh, seeing a record turnout, and um, that's encouraging. Um, we're also uh, making... A lot of, uh, you know, persuasion calls uh, to that persuadable universe. And about 10% of the Republicans that we call NCD4 are, uh, are telling us uh, that they're voting for Ike, you know, for me, uh, for our campaign. And <clears throat> it's because our platform uh, speaks directly to the needs of people in our district. Um, and I think that we stand a really uh, good chance of winning in November. And uh, the reason I say that is because I've been all over the district, and I've talked to farmers and ranchers, uh, Corn Growers Association, Wheat Growers Association, Hemp Growers Association, um, and I've engaged with them. I showed up and listened uh, to their problems. And so i say we got a 50-50 shot at, at Congressional District 4 this time around. And that's exactly what the polls are telling us, that you know we're neck and neck with Ken Buck, and we're competing you know, with his corrupt corporate uh, money machine as well, uh, with our grassroots uh, funding. And you know, it just goes to show um, <clears throat> that you don't have to bow to the pressure of um, the corporate political establishment. And that's uh, my promise when I go to Washington, is that I will not bow to the corporate political establishment. I will show up, I will listen to the needs uh, of the constituents in my district, and I will legislate accordingly. And we will address the environmental crisis, and we will create good paying jobs for our citizens that are sustainable. And we'll invest in our educational institutions and repair our roads and bridges and advance our technology and start living up um, to the foundational, uh, fundamental values uh, that we believe in um, and that we need to propagate uh, so that, you know, we can redefine ourselves in the eyes of the world. I, what kind of endorsements have you gotten? Yeah, you know, I'm really proud uh, that we just recently <laughs> received uh, the endorsement of uh, Elizabeth Warren and uh, the AFL uh, ICO and the UFC W7 and uh, the former chair of the Colorado Historical Society, William Way, and, <clears throat> you know, a host of other folks. Um, I'm going off memory here. I apologize. My voice is quitting on me. But uh, I'm really proud that we've received the endorsement of um, the Sunrise Movement right here in Colorado uh, because that tells me that our youth um, are recognizing uh, that, that I recognize, that we recognize uh, the existential threat of our time. And so I'm really proud to have the endorsement of uh, the Sunrise Movement, and really proud to have the endorsement of Senator Elizabeth Warren. And, you know, there's a host of others uh, on the website. <laughs> if you want the full list, you can go check it out, of course, on ikesforco.com. And, I, of course, I need to throw a pitch in. So if you can afford it, uh, make a contribution, because we have a list of every voter out there in Congressional District 4 uh, that has not got a ballot in yet. And uh, if you want us uh, to get 
um, a postcard in that mailbox tomorrow, then I need you to pitch in. Even if you just pitch in 20 bucks um, on my website, that 20 bucks is going to get, you know, close to 20 postcards in uh, persuadable independent voters' uh, mailboxes. And that's how we're going to win. Also, volunteers to uh, independent, uh, not independent, but you know, uh, progressive candidates uh, need volunteers to help uh, get souls to the polls, drive those people out to to the voting booths. Yeah. Now, one of the biggest uh, things facing Colorado right now is got those big forest fires, right? How are you going to deal with that? Yeah, Colorado is uh, experiencing uh, the worst uh, wildfires in our history um, as a direct result. Uh, of course of the um, extended periods of drought and as a direct result of the massive um, uh, invasive species and beetle infestations uh, that are all uh, you know due to uh, the effects of uh, climate change and you know I just had a debate uh, with my opponent Ken Buck where he called and and this was October 16th, 2020, he called, he said that climate change was theoretical and our state is literally uh, burning down. Uh, I drove up uh, to Weld uh, to do some literature drops and the smoke billowing across our state uh, is literally choking. Um, and you know, you couldn't see a couple hundred yards up there <clears throat> and um it's tragic and um you know it's the direct effects of climate change and climate change is the direct effect of um corruption in our legislature the, re the only reason <clears throat> why we haven't been transitioning to um renewable or carbon neutral energy production methods uh, since the 70s uh, is because of corruption in the legislature. Um, the D Department of Defense has uh, seen um, <clears throat> climate change as a national security issue since the Reagan administration um, and has addressed it explicitly in every single national security document uh, since 1991. Hmm. And uh, senior military leaders um, take it seriously. They understand uh, the devastating uh, effects of these wildfires, of these invasive uh, beetle species that kill our forests, of these extended periods of drought, of changing precipitation patterns, and the impact that that has on our agricultural industry. Um, these are not... Um, theoretical problems these are clear and present uh, dangers of security and you know recognizing climate change as a critical national security problem um, to date uh, DOD uh, NASA government has focused you know on adaptation uh, rather than prevention on incrementalism and that is a farce incrementalism uh, is poisoning our air land and our water and it's compromising uh, future generations it's compromising uh, the american dream and prosperity uh, for our children okay Ike um, McCorkle, so, we're, st we're starting to run low on time so let me ask you this what about medicare for oral where do you stand on that well you know that's another thing. We're in the middle of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, and it's brought to the surface a lot of problems, and it's made apparent uh, that our medical system uh, does not have the capacity to deal um, with uh, pandemics uh, because, essentially, it's a system that is uh, established for profits instead of patient care. What we need is a single payer. Uh, Medicare for all healthcare system uh, that doesn't uh, bankrupt people and that doesn't uh, thereby, you know, cause evictions of families. Um, it's not only uh, the morally right thing to do, 
it's the fiscally most responsible thing to do. Uh, it'll lower costs and it will provide access to high quality health care. Um, it will provide the funds to construct rural hospitals, to pay nurses, doctors, and EMTs livable wages. <clears throat> and like I said, it's not just the fiscally res most responsible thing to do, it's the only morally sound thing to do. Um, because <clears throat> the way I like to explain it to people is if grandma falls down at 55 and breaks her hip and her daughter and her granddaughter live with her and grandma goes to the ER, um, grandma should not ha be bankrupt by medical bills because of a, an accident, an illness, or an injury, and thereby <clears throat> been evicted from her home and her and her daughter and her granddaughter be made homeless. 60% of evictions annually are the direct result of unpaid medical bills. Um, <clears throat> it's uh, immoral and it's not uh, fiscally sound to allow uh, profits to remain in our medical system. That's why it's so critical that uh, we elect um, members uh, to the U.S. House and Senate who will be strong voices and who will push the administration in the right direction on these issues. Yeah, the number one reason for bankruptcy is also medical bills. And the number one reason why women choose to get abortions is for financial reasons. If we could uh, break that cycle of poverty and uh, medical bills and bankruptcies, everyone who's pro-life could, could then uh, achieve the results that they're looking for, a uh, huge reduction in abortions. You recently had a Absolutely. debate with uh, Ed, uh, Ken Buck. What can you tell us about your debate with Ken Buck? Yeah. Well, some, some sparks. Some sparks are flying. Huh? <laughs> it was interesting, uh, to say the least. Um, you know, we uh, covered a range of topics. Like I mentioned earlier, he said that uh, climate change uh, was theoretical. And, um, you know, <clears throat> the, the crux of the matter uh, to me is that um, Ken Buck voted for a $1.5 trillion a tax scam that gave tax breaks uh, to himself, uh, to his super rich buddies, and to their shareholders. Uh, meanwhile, over the last six years that he's been in office, incomes have dropped across hmm. rural Colorado and across Congressional District 4. And, um, you know, he said that we could manage uh, these wildfires uh, by logging, that climate change was theoretical, and that um, <clears throat> we needed to give tax breaks, more tax breaks, uh, to corporations. <laughs> and, uh, you know, fundamentally, he still believes in this theory of trickle-down economics, which, you know, we both know is a farce. Uh, it doesn't trickle down. It gets hoarded at the top and it gets pushed into offshore uh, unaccessible accounts and we have a situation where dozens of multinational corporations pay next to nothing uh, towards investment uh, in the infrastructure, in the roads and bridges um, <clears throat> that they use to deliver their products uh, to American consumers. And <clears throat> That's not a fair system. That is a rigged system uh, where Amazon and Netflix and multinational corporations pay zero in taxes. Um, this is an unfair advantage, and it's driving small businesses out of business in rural Colorado and in rural America. And it's largely responsible for the outsourcing of American industry, labor, and production, which we've seen uh, in this pandemic, is, uh, is still critical. Uh, we need to be able to produce uh, industrial uh, products, and we need to develop uh, environmentally friendly means of industrial production for those products 
right here in the United States, advance our technology, uh, and start, um, you know, living up to our ideals. And instead of, um, you know, passing legislation to uh, give tax breaks to the rich and shareholders, we need to pass legislation uh, to protect workers' rights, to ensure that Americans have revenue in their pockets to put food on their tables, and that they have a roof over their head for the duration of this pandemic. Ike, let me ask you this. You gave him an opportunity to renounce right-wing white supremacist groups. Did he take you up on that? <laughs> yeah, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> it's probably the fieriest point. Uh, the debate. You're probably trying to cue me in on to that. On that. Well, but, l- well, luckily he didn't bring his rifle with him. Okay, let's put it that way. <laughs> okay, you right. gave him a chance though to denounce right wing, yeah. r- white supremacy. Did he do that? Yeah. So he took a kind of a, a, a cheap shot at the end of the debate, uh, when according to the rules of the debate, uh, I didn't have uh, the right to respond. And you know he brought up these you know um, accusations that. Uh, which are ludicrous, that, uh, you know, we're involved with left-wing, you know, radicals and stuff. Uh, So my response was that, you know, uh, which should be the response of anyone uh, in a uh, representative or any representative, um, is that I denounce, you know, all violent extremism in all its shapes and forms and fashions and um i called on ken buck uh to denounce uh antifa to denounce the kkk to denounce the american nazi party uh to denounce the alt-right and i asked him to denounce white supremacy and and i denounce and denounce now and denounce to then uh radicalism and violence in all its forms uh we don't need it we need to solve problems uh, via the deliberative process, um, as is um, <clears throat> the way of a representative institution of government. Um, and we need reps in office that are going to set the example. Uh, Ken Buck, instead of denouncing white supremacy, instead of um, denouncing uh, Antifa, the KKK, the all right, um, which he called on me to do, so um, no, I did. Instead of denouncing white supremacy, uh, she just stood up and walked out of the room. You can see him walking straight across, you know, the camera and walking away as, you know, I ask him, I reiterate that, you know, I would like him to um, also denounce uh, violent extremism. Um, and instead of doing so, he just walked away. Um, and so I think that shows us, you know, exactly uh, where Kim Buck stands and exactly the example that he's going to sit. Um, Ike, Ike McCorkle, we got less than one minute left. Ike McCorkle running for CD4 Congress in Colorado. Got less than one minute left. What do you want to leave us with? Yeah, we have a rigged system, and we have uh, corrupt politicians in office who are serving the interest of shareholders and profits uh, instead of the will, interests, and needs of American citizens. Uh, I am a retired Marine officer, a Purple Heart recipient, and I'm a concerned father. And if we want to save our democracy, save the integrity of our representative institution of government, we have to get out and vote. If we want to get corruption out of our government, if we want to start solving problems, we have to vote. Um, find, Find 10 people and text them today and get them to the ballot box. Get them to turn in their ballots, and together we can take our government back, restore integrity, uh, trust, the people's confidence, and most importantly, faith in good governance. Thank you so much for having me on today, Ed. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Ike McCorkle, he's running for CD4. Congressional District 4 in Colorado. The website is ike4co.com. And if you want to donate tonight, give.ike4co.com. Ike McCorkle, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Have an awesome day. Thank you. Good night. And now a word from our sppp sponsors. OppermanReport.com. 
Hey, do you like what you're hearing? Do you like the work that you see us doing here at Opperman Report? You can support that work by becoming a member at OppermanReport.com. And as you have access to over 200 exclusive shows and interviews that you can't find on YouTube or Spreaker or iHeart or iTunes or KYAH, you can't find them anywhere else online, exclusive to our member sections, to our members. Also, too, there's images, videos, documents, court docs. And don't forget, you can hear your ad played here on the Opera and Report, reach hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people on a daily basis because the show is repeated every day all over the world. Contact me at operandreport at gmail.com and I'll give you a good deal on advertising rates. Have you ever thought about opening your own mobile cart or kiosk business? Maybe the facility you manage could establish new revenue by adding coffee, food, or retail services. Cart King International can be the answer to your needs. Cart King is a North American designer and manufacturer of the finest mobile coffee, food, and retail carts and kiosks. Cart King has been working with clients and corporations across North America for 20 years, providing innovative designs, custom manufacturing, and timely delivery. Carts and kiosks are fun, and so are the dozens of designs on our website. Please visit us today at www.cart-king.com or just call us at one 877 986-7771 and get your sales rolling. The Opperman Report is brought to you by Aquadam.net. You can give them a call at 707-764-2119. A flooded home is never easy to deal with. You're left with the mess to clean up, the insurance companies to deal with, and not to mention all the memories, the precious memories that are lost in the flood. You can never replace those. And Aquadam can be a tool in your arsenal to protect your home and property from the floodwaters. The coffer dam is filled with water to control water and is reusable as long as it's taken care of. It can protect your home or business from rising floodwaters like a dam, but without the beavers. It can also be used in construction. If you need an area to be dewatered, an aqua dam can do the job. An aqua dam was used at SeaWorld in Orlando for the Mako roller coaster ride during the coaster's construction by dewatering the work area. An aqua dam is now dewatering the work area at San Antonio SeaWorld for their newest roller coaster ride. An aqua dam has been used in many construction projects all around the U.S. and all around the world. Now give aqua dam a call, 707-764-2119. You can look them up online at aquadam.net. You can find them on Facebook at Aquadam Inc. You call them up, you email them, you tell them Ed Opperman sent you, and they're going to take 10% off the price. Aquadam.net, 707-764-2119. Are you ready to change your life but don't know how to start? Is your stress and worries keeping you awake at night? Have you been battling grief, anxiety, or depression all alone? Have you lost touch with your own sense of being or spirituality? Soul Free Therapies offers professional and affordable live video streaming counseling and coaching services from the comfort of your own home. Sessions offered in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Go to our website at www.soul-free.com and book your first session today. If you find yourself in need of legal representation, it can be a very stressful time in your life. In my career, I have dealt with thousands of lawyers, I've dealt with thousands of law firms, and I can confidently recommend to you Keith M. Davidson at kmdlaw.com. Available 24 hours, seven days a week, just log into kmdlaw.com, that's kmdlaw.com, or you can call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW, that's 833-4-KMD-LAW. Personal injury, wrongful death, STDs, sexual assault, car accidents, they handle it all efficiently and professionally. It doesn't matter how imposing the opposition may be, because the team at KMDLaw.com are battle-tested and fierce. They will not stop until justice prevails. Go to KMDLaw.com or call toll-free 833-4-KMD-LAW. If you're in for the fight of your life, stop screwing around and contact KMDLaw. PureSoapFlakes.com 218-568-2525. Have you ever heard of Castile Soap? Pure Soap Flake Company handcrafts fine soap bars, laundry powder, and concentrated soap flakes using organic vegetable oils from their northern Minnesota facility. Bathe your body and wash your clothes with pure soap products that are free of fragrance, GMOs, palm oil, sodium lauryl sulfate, and synthetic additives. Keep it clean, folks. Pure Soap Flake Company products are kind to living creatures and sensitive skin, safe for drains and waterways, and work great in high-efficiency washers and top- and front-loading machines. 
They have a little promotion going on. Contact them to order some soap. Mention the Opperman Report. You're going to get a free gift. They're going to send a little extra soap, travel size, soap bars, and laundry soap, cleaning soap flakes. I've been using that stuff all day long to make great stuff. Order today at puresoapflakes.com or give them a call. 218-568-2525. 218-568-2525. Pure Soap Flake Company is a proud member of the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetic Guild. <laughs> 